Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service on this gorgeous morning. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted that you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you very much. So now let's join together in prayer. I invite you to turn within and experience the bliss of connection to the one the absolute, the creator of all that is, the most powerful and yet the most loving spirit giving life to all. Each of us is a gift to the world given by this one and only. I claim for myself and everyone here watching and listening a clean slate on which to write wondrous things of love and healing and prosperity, and that we call on the spirit within us to guide us each and every day forward. We listen to the small knowing voice within for what to say, to whom, and when to say it. Love and only love flows through our veins, and peace resides in our hearts. My heart is filled with gratitude for this wonderful new day, for our blessed and inspired Dr. Mark, our rock, and for the promise of new beginnings with our new assistant minister, our beloved Reverend Dr. Sidney. I release my word into the love and the light and the absolute mind of God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God, you are the face of God, I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me, you are the face of God, you are the face of God.
and join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our congregational song, What a Wonderful World. going to meditate for the next five minutes, I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
this vision let us start with these tools and on this ground pray your will for us abounds let us grow a church of love and understanding let us grow a church of peace let us build a foundation strong enough to embrace all in kind let us grow a church of heart moment and in this space in your presence and with your grace we ask for nothing for your will to flow through us and be fulfilled while the walls of fear that may have held us yesterday dissolve to dust upon the ground and simply fade away and the power and strength inherently that flows within moves us forward now as we begin to grow our church of love As we grow a church of peace, as we build a foundation large enough to embrace all in kind, let us grow a church. All right, good morning. good morning. Thank you for being here. I'm happy that we're all together. Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit. Uh, you know, I, in my preparation, I feel like I was all over the place, but I really want to talk about the Ten Commandments. In the Old Testament, Moses is leading the children of Israel to the Promised Land. They have been enslaved by the Pharaoh for hundreds and hundreds of years. So all they know for generations is life as slavery. Mm -hmm. He goes, so they're, they're, they're off, right? They leave the Pharaoh, and they are wandering in the desert. It's, remember, it's a 40-year journey. Uh, I think, God, if this was my family, the snacks my mother would have had to pack are just unbelievable, because we didn't go anywhere without a picnic basket. But anyway, so they're out in the desert, and Moses goes up the mountain, and he receives the Ten Commandments. So I'm, I'm just going to bring this a little shorter here. So the commandments, I think, are sacred foundational elements of both Judaism and Christianity. They're divinely inspired guidelines on how to live a good life filled with peace, prosperity, and freedom. So the I am that I am, or in other words, God, appeared in the burning bush to Moses. And he said, well, who should I say sent me? And he said, tell the people I am that I am. Okay? So I believe that the Ten Commandments, not unlike the Eightfold Path that, Bruda, that the Buddha brought into the consciousness of humanity, 
came uh, as a moral code so that humanity could begin to evolve. Remember, so specifically speaking about the Hebrew people that Moses was leading, these were people who had no um, individuated consciousness yet. They thought only as a group. The, you know, the collective did the thinking for the whole group. And so before they got the commandments, people were just generally kind of wild. There were no guidelines for how to live. They just did, they sort of lived like animals. They lived completely on impulse. Whatever occurred to them, they did. So this undeveloped consciousness, living out of the five senses, wants and desires, the Ten Commandments give us form and structure to start living a spiritual life. So I'm going to share them with you because I suspect nobody here has read them recently. So just to prepare you, one, I'm, I'm, just again, brief, I am the Lord thy God, have no other gods before me. Two, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Three, keep holy the Sabbath. Four, honor your father and mother. Five, don't murder. Six, don't commit adultery. Seven, don't steal. Eight, don't bear fall witness. Nine, don't cover your neighbor's house. Ten, don't cover your neighbor's wife, servants, goods, or animals. There you go. So a founding principle of these United States is that the government should balance individual liberty with concern for the common good. And so I think about this, and I think about the dichotomy of who we say we are and who we actually are. You know that difference there? It's been with us, I think, since the beginning, that as people, we are dedicated uh, to the most enlightened principles. You know, in America, our Constitution is a really advanced document, yet imbued with forces that are more than willing to transgress against them. So I think about this, and I think, you know, 50... Six, 56 people signed the Declaration of Independence, right? Like, wow, that's great. 41 of them owned slaves. Wow, how could they do that? Well, because, you know, we're not all finished products yet, right? And so, so this week, Texas, what the heck, Texas, you know? How unbelievable, how horrific something has to change. Now, I know every, everybody is grieving, and and. A lot of people, including a lot of parents, will never be the same. Now, this keeps happening, right? Now, we're talking about our children. We must not give up on this. These ongoing horrific events, I think, are not isolated incidents. They, they're saying something about us, about who we are. This is not happening anywhere else in the developed world. You know, so I was taught the Second Amendment exists because it doesn't make sense for the government, uh, that the government should be the only ones who can have guns, right? That, I remember hearing that as a child. And I know lots of people who are uh, sportsmen with guns, you know, that they, they hunt three, four seasons a year. So here we say we balance healing with wisdom. This is something we teach in the science of mind, that we're balancing healing with wisdom. So the rights Hmm. All right, I'm going to go against everything I've ever said uh, as, as far as like, not talking about these things in church. But I, think, but I want to do this in the context of us using the Ten Commandments to evolve ourselves spiritually and having something like the Ten Commandments are the litmus test. We look at that and say, should I do this? Look at the Ten Commandments. Should I do this? Look at the Ten Commandments. So here we say we're balancing healing with wisdom, right? So the rights of gun manufacturers to make guns are not greater than the rights of people who want to send their children to school safely, right? That seems pretty obvious, right? So the end of an age is always, always filled with difficulties. We see this again and again historically. Old forms that are falling away burst forth again and again for another hurrah. You know, perhaps, hopefully, the last hurrah. So you and I, I mean, you know that I am all for prospering consciousness. You know, I love the freedom of choices we have if we are a prosperous consciousness. But this is painful right now, heinously so. We are, and I believe that we are basically good people, but we're off base. We have once again put money before what is truly important. 
What is truly important? Well, what's truly important, I think, is Jesus' great commandment. That sums it all up. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all you got, and to love one another as yourself. So AK-47s, to me, are not for the purpose of loving one another. I could be wrong on that. But as far as I've seen, so here we are, one of the most advanced, rich countries in the world. We have everything, everything going for us, but it's not quite working. People are anxious. People are depressed. People are afraid to send their children to school. You know, the principles that govern our country are not necessarily loving, right? They're not keeping people, particularly our children, safe. We're feeling again and again the effects of putting greed first and not being loving, So, do we not understand that if we don't change, it will keep going in the direction that it's going? That's the meaning of entropy, that an object continues going in the direction that it's going. So, I believe with all my heart that love wins, that love will always win out. And people may say of God's love, where is God in all of this that's taking place? Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Where is God in all of this? And the answer is right here in you and me. Right? right here in you and me. Why does God let this happen? God doesn't. We do. Okay, Let's be really clear about that. People want to shove this off onto God, and God had nothing to do with it except God gave us free will. So I don't feel like this is um, what's happening right now. This doesn't feel like the country I grew up in, the country that I love, the country that I so want to be proud of. People all over the world look to America as a place of promise and opportunity and possibility. So how did we, from the land of the free and the home of the brave, get to this place? You know, I remember our church trip to Ireland about eight years ago or so. We went to Northern Ireland. We were in Belfast. And we had this woman who was a guide with us for a couple of days, a wonderful woman. She was a mother of a number of children. And she told us that every day, during the years of the conflict over there, whether the conflict was actually happening at that moment or not, that she was part of, now hear this, a telephone tree of a dozen or 15 mothers or so who were all in different locations around Belfast, but all their kids went to the same school. And so what they would do in the morning is they would get up and this woman would go to her telescope in the living room window because her house was on a hill. And she would check out all these different places and look at the school. And then she would call a couple mothers. And they would get out their binoculars or their telescopes, if you can even imagine. And they would look and see, is it safe? Is it safe? And they did this every day for years and years and years. And some days they would see a little smoke. Or they would hear a police report. Or something would be going on. And they would say, I don't think it's safe. Now, they were relying largely on mother's intuition. You know, we've all heard about that. And also what was happening with their physical senses. But the amount of stress that this created in everyone's life, wondering on a daily basis, are our children safe to go to school? You know, we were horrified with this. We were horrified with this. And now here we are. Our children are not safe. So something has to change inside of us and then it will change out in the world, okay? But be clear, to just implement external change out here in the world without us individually and collectively going within and finding compassion and mercy, you know, if we don't do that, history will clearly, clearly continue to repeat itself. So the first time there was a school killing with a semi-automatic weapon, That should have been enough. We should have said, oh, this has gone too far. This has gone too far. See, semi-automatic weapons that go into an elementary school were not what the founding fathers were trying to protect. I'm sure. I'm certain of that. I am of the opinion that most of the problems we experience today, this is ugly, but I'm going to say it, I think are because of greed. Yeah. Americans have put the love of money before the love of God and each other and even their children, right? So money is not bad, certainly not. It's, an en- it's energy, and it sits there until someone with some consciousness does something with it. 
So like Mother Teresa used to say, you are God's only hands on earth. You are God's only feet on earth. You are God's only voice on earth. On earth, God's work is our own. So my whole point about the Ten Commandments was that I believe that they were given to humanity so that humanity could start to evolve in a more conscious way. The only way to get out of that collective mindset where we feel like a victim or the group does the thinking for us right, is to do our own spiritual work. Right? And that's what we're all about. That's what we are all about. So you know, I know that whether it's the Ten Commandments or the Eightfold Path or your own moral compass. You know, whatever that is for you, I know that we are guided and that we have seen enough of what we've seen so that as we move forward, we can heal whatever it is in us so that the future for everybody can be a lot brighter. Let's pray. So we turn our attention, thank you. We're just going to turn our attention inward for a moment to remember that we are surrounded and we are filled with God's infinite loving intelligent spirit. That yes, indeed, the spirit of the Lord is upon us this day. And I know that that's a spirit of love and intelligence and creativity and compassion. So I know not only that we are one with God, but I know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are open to healing whatever it is in us that needs to be healed so that we can move forward with greater love, greater mercy, greater compassion. And that whatever this impulse is, whatever this impulse is that is so destructive that it be dissolved, released, and let go in the consciousness of humanity, in the consciousness of Americans, in the consciousness of each and every one of us, we ask in all sincerity, Spirit, what is it I need to heal so that the world, starting with me, can be a more peaceful, loving place? What is it that I need to heal? And whatever we get, we take that. Whatever we get, we take that. So we let our prayer be a blessing, loving, peaceful energy that emanates out into the world, touching all people everywhere, particularly people in Texas this week who've been so affected by that shooting. We open our hearts and minds to them and pour out an energy of love and compassion and mercy that is absolutely healing. We know that the Spirit of God within each and every one of us is only a beneficial presence. And so we call that forth, not only in ourselves, to heal our minds and our lives, but in the lives of everyone who's been affected this week by these tragedies. And so we continue to be big people spiritually and take a breath and open our hearts that much more to include everyone in the Ukraine and everyone who's being affected there. And we let our prayer wrap around the entire globe, our beloved Mother Earth, so that all people everywhere are lifted up, are loved, are healed, have their needs met. So I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today. And so in this consciousness, I speak this word of blessing for our church home, for all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is a collective consciousness of all of us that's greater than any one of us individually, and it lifts us all up to a higher place in consciousness, a place of peace, a place of love, a place of all needs met for everyone everywhere. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It's evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
just have to say that I chose this song welcoming Reverend Sydney and not knowing how sad this talk was going to be. So forgive the imbalance of this song balanced with the Ten Commandment speech. Here we go. <laughs> universe bring me more of this mm -hmm. no longer focused on the things I lack when the thoughts of doubt come I can send them packing got a clear perspective on the strength inside me finally at peace with where I am and want to be joy is at hand and I confess I am set to for nothing less and now I'm surrendering to this unyielding bliss I say yes universe bring me more of this shiny splendid warm and centered whole and wanting nothing more she relation and joyous anticipation of the that's in store I now command all that you would I understand that matters most is that I feel good allowing the power of creation to far exceed my wildest expectation surrendering to this unyielding bliss I say yes universe bring me more of this bring me more of this I was going to talk some more. But I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Is Reverend Sidney around anywhere? Would you do that, Sam? Thanks. How are you? Remember to come back for lunch later. We're going to have a barbecue after the next service. So if you need to go to brunch first, feel free to do that. Then come back here. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, Okie dokie. Yay! Come, come be here with us for a minute. You rang? Yes, I did. So why don't you? Um, so today we were having, we thought we would have a little recommitment to things. Um, as you know, our world is changing and it seems to not be going back to the way it was. So it's important and difficulty to stay close to spiritual truth. Coming out of the last few years, it feels to me like we are entering into a whole new chapter, and the need for spiritual consciousness is greater than ever before. So we know and understand the importance of community, the value of feeling that we belong, and so this is a huge, huge key to a long life, strong community. Our church, North Hollywood, has existed for almost 70 years. Next year, we're going to celebrate our 70th anniversary. I hope you will be here for that. I certainly will be. And I'm really looking forward to it. So today, we are starting a new chapter the life, in the life of our church and our community. Nine months ago, 
Reverend Sidney came to be with us. And she brought a whole bunch of gifts and talents and abilities and consciousness and love. And it has clearly, clearly been a blessing. So today we are installing Reverend Sidney officially as our assistant minister. That means up until now she has unofficially been our assistant minister, I guess. But she is really, really our assistant minister. Um, and so, Reverend Sidney, we welcome you to the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Do you promise to do your best as the assistant minister of the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science? I do. Do you promise to love and serve this community, this congregation, with the best that is within you? I absolutely do. And do you promise to pray and meditate a lot? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And do you promise to put God first? Always. Focus on oneness? Yes. And love the hell out of this life? Oh, yes. All right. Then we welcome you, and we thank you for answering the call with all your gifts, talents, abilities, love, and consciousness. <laughs> Reverend Sidney, what do you want to say? Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, so an installation is, is much like a wedding. Um, in fact, we do have cake later. <laughs> I won't be doing a garter thing, but um, I just I want you all to know that it is my commitment to you that this is a shared commitment that we have. This is, we are formalizing our relationship and committing to be just so aware of the oneness that we share, that we are. And so my promise to you is that I stand here in full recognition, and I will stay standing in full recognition of your divinity, my divinity, the consciousness of this church, and, and I will do everything I can to model and to be hmm, that person who prays and who meditates and who remembers to remember to remember that there is only one life, and that life is God. And that's the life that you and I live. And then the other promise I want to make to you, again, like a marriage, um, I will always be steadfast and loyal. And I will always be in truth. I will always be in truth. And so I'm very grateful that I get to be here. And, and I honor all of you. And I love all of you. Um, and the last thing I want to say about a marriage is I will never use sex as a weapon. So that's, that's my commitment to you. Some practitioners who are here today. So if you're a practitioner, would you stand for just a brief moment? I know you're vigiling, but you can stand and still vigil. No, you don't have to vigil. Um, as practitioners, you represent and stand for the active knowing and the living embodiment of God. During our time in quarantine, the public expression of your work appeared to shift in ways both unexpected and unimaginable. Some of you relocated and retired. As a community, we said goodbye to some practitioners as they entered into the greater expression of the great beyond. We are grateful for your commitment to establishing and maintaining the continual consciousness of and for the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. The spiritual work you do in the silence demonstrates in the lives of yourselves, your clients, and our church. Do you reconsecrate and rededicate yourselves to the spiritual vision and activity? If so, say, I do. Yes, okay. Do you promise to honor your relationship with God first and to seek to remember oneness in all you do? I do. Okay. And do you accept Reverend Sidney as your new assistant minister, teacher, and one of the leaders of this church? I do. Well, thank you. You may be seated. All right. Now, the rest of you, you don't have to stand for this, but you could if you wanted to. I ask you, will you continue to support this church to the best of your ability? I will. Will you pray for the church, its ministers, and board? I will. Then thank you so much. You're recommitted. Yay! What happens now? I'm new. I don't know. Pat? Pat! Patricia has announcements for us, so please. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was unaware of this order. <laughs> But it's wonderful. I'm so glad we had it. Thank you, Margaret Owens. Welcome back. And it's 
Thank you, Sam and Karen. If this is your first time in our church, we're delighted you're here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number is inside your program and a QR code is on the back. Or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person here or on Zoom. Flowers, our beautiful flowers today are in honor of Reverend Sidney's installation, which you know. <laughs> Welcome to NHCRS and bless, we bless your ministry. This is from Lynn Romanowski and Barbara Berg. Wednesday evening service on June the 1st, the meditation will begin at 6.50 and the service is at 7. Join Reverend Sydney this week as she shares on the topic, Fifty Shades of God. <laughs> <laughs> the Japan trip with Dr. Mark is in October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. And don't miss this. We have a new class. A remarkable Dr. Mark is presenting a remarkable six-week class based on the teachings of a remarkable woman. Curtis, Emma Curtis Hopkins was and is one of the most profound new thought icons. Her book, Scientific Christian Mental Practice, establishes an absolute and powerful foundation for the healing and wholeness in every area of your life. Join Dr. Mark for Scientific Christian Mental Practice Part 1, Mondays beginning June 6th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. on Zoom only. Cost is $150, a real bargain. Sign up on the patio or online. Get the book in our bookstore or online. Our 2022 Memorial Day Sunday celebration is today. 11.30 a.m. service offered in person and on Zoom. We will remember, which is to invite our members to recommit. Renew, invite practitioners to recommit. Rewire, install Reverend Sid, Dr. Sidney Lehman Steen as our assistant minister, and refire afterwards with a delicious barbecue and party for kids and adults. Please join us. If you or a loved one could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a pastoral care team ready to help. Please reach out to our team through our service website. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 p.m. Uh, no, a.m., excuse me. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletter. And that's all, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Why don't we all stand and sing the peace song together?
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I am at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.